Oh, and we got a new person. I just saw that right. pop up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I always start with that parent and guardian agreement because it is the most important piece of paper when a parent decides not to pay you for your for the cookies you have given them. Okay. Before I was um, in product sales, I was with membership department. Um, I've been with the council for 15 years and half of them were in membership and I was the cookie mom. I have three daughters. Um, and this happened to me one year where a mom owed $500 for cookies and all of a sudden stopped coming to meetings and start, you know, started to like, the meetings are canceled. She'd tell her child and meanwhile, the meetings weren't canceled. Um, but the troop didn't have to hold the bag on that only because I had her, her parent guardian agreement that showed that she would owe the cookies and not the troop. So little tidbits that, you know, we've learned over the years is, um, I used to tell people you should get like a little accordion holder to keep all your little forms and your deposit slips in, but even easier nowadays is take a picture of it. Just take your phone out, take a picture of everything people have signed or deposit slips or anything like that, and um, just save it. You know, I mean, eventually, you know, when cookies is all said and done, you can delete the photos, but then you don't have to worry about keeping them, saving them, losing them. You know, you got them all right there. So the next would be your agreement that you sign with us to let us know who is in charge of cookies for your troop. So the leaders do have access to um, eBuddy, but we also need um, to know who your troop chair is. You know, so this year what we did was instead of it being a carbon form, we did it online. So that way everybody could get into the system a little bit faster. And because of COVID, nobody was meeting. So it just made um, a little bit more streamlined. So if you haven't done that already, you need to get that done so that way we can give you access to eBuddy. Um, of course, we have the order card. Order card is pretty self-explanatory. It has all the cookies listed on it, um, as well as on the back, it has all the rewards the girls can earn. So we'll go into rewards in a little bit. A catch-up form, we kind of eliminated this year. Um, it used to be in my presentation, but if you are fairly new, you wouldn't know it was a form. But um, nowadays, what you do is you're going to put your transaction into eBuddy instead of filling out a form and just showing up at the cupboard. We did that to try to eliminate as many people at the cupboard as possible. We're trying to, you know, keep everybody safe, you know, and um, if you have an appointment, hopefully there won't be a giant line. When we first started it, there was the first weekend with all the snow and it was a little crazy, um, but we've worked out the kinks. So I think we've got a good flow going on right now. So um, hopefully it'll keep flowing and we'll be all good. Um, receipt book is very important. Um, when I was the cookie mom, I hated the receipt book because I'm a big writer and those receipt books are the tiniest thing known to man. Um, so instead of using the receipt book, I made my own receipts, which is perfectly fine. We're just giving you tools and it's up to you to decide how you want to use them. I didn't like that tool, so I made my own. Um, anything that keeps you sane and organized, fantastic, okay? Um, some of the forms we have now more from when I was the cookie mom, because it's things I used that I was like, why don't we just make this a form? Um, we had a new form last year. I think it was Jenna, the initial sale for receipt, because my first year doing it, I had, there were, well, there were 15 daisies in the troop and everybody handed me their order card and I couldn't make heads or tails of them. It was like reading hieroglyphics. You know, what does grandma want? Is that a two or a check mark? You know, so I created my own receipt where instead of collecting their order cards, I just said, I just need to know your totals. So please just tell me what you need. I don't need to know who bought. I just need to know how many you need. So that morphed into the initial sale receipt. Um, payments, we have, we're gonna, we do use deposit slips, um, but there's, a, there's gonna be a slide later on in the presentation. So I can show you a couple little tidbits about the deposit slips. And also we give you a troop manual. We call it the troop manual guidebook. Um, it's available online and you should also have a paper version of it. Um, nine times out of 10, the questions you have are answered in there. Um, so if you can't get one of us, you know, and you definitely have a question, you should try there. Um, if you don't see it in there, feel free to contact us. Okay. Slide, please. Okay. So these are just pictures of your form so you can become familiar with them. This is the parent guardian agreement. It changes the date every year. So every year the parent does need to fill this out because it coincides with the, the, with the proper Girl Scout year. Okay, so clearly this one says 2021. They get the top part, you keep the bottom, take a picture of it, you have it for posterity. So you're all good there, okay? 
Next is your troop chair agreement. This is basically what the form used to look like before we put it online. Um, the link in the presentation right here to the right um, where it says troop chair agreement. If you, once we send this to you and you don't know where to find it, you could click on there. It'll bring you right to the form online. Okay. And also Kelly added this year, the ability for, so you don't like, if you're the troop chair or if you have the troop chair, other people can pick up in the cupboard as long as you assign them a role. So if you, if you have somebody that you want to pick up cupboard stuff because they're, they're selling a lot of cookies and you don't have time to come in, they can fill out this form and just pick the other, I think it's what cupboard person? What cupboard is it? pick up person. I think it's cupboard said something around person. those lines. So they because would now have- that you need, Yeah, now yeah. that you can't just show up at the cupboard, you have to have access to eBuddy in order to put in an order. So if you have parents that their girl is shooting for 500 or higher, they're gonna come to the cupboard a lot. So you mm -hmm. might wanna give them access to be able to place their own orders, okay? And then they the only system have does access keep track to them. Of, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and the system does show who put that order in. So that way you can always backtrack and see who signed in and put that order in. Okay, but thank you for that. I've totally forgot about that. Okay, this is just a, a visual of the back of the order card. Um, one thing we did miss since we're starting late is the initial sale rewards are on the top left. Um, so you guys missed out on that. That's, a, that's at the beginning of the sale. What happens is we try to push the girls to sell more at the beginning because all those orders come to the service unit on a big truck. So it's one less trip for you to the cupboard. So it's a certain time frame. This year it was 1221 to 129. Um, and then the troops had a couple days to make sure all the orders were in the system. So you could earn those rewards during that time frame, but it's not a big deal if you don't. Some troops don't even do it. They just come for to catch ups. Whatever works for your troop is fine. But we do try to promote that because it's a little bit easier on you because you only have to go around the block to pick up your cookies from your service unit, opposed to having to come to one of the cupboards. We do have some rewards for Operation Cookie. Um, so that's, I think we did those last year too. Um, so 25, we're doing what's called um, Operation Cookie slash Gift of Caring because last year we did a lot of donations to essential workers. So we thought we would morph that into, you know, the program now. So it's not just for um, the military, it's also for hometown heroes and, you know, essential workers. So we changed the verbiage on that a little bit. Um, this year also we upped our game on the digital cookie rewards. So there's more there for the girls to earn. Um, we tried to keep, I guess, like the techie rewards more towards that because we feel like the girls are more techie if they're doing that aspect of the sale. Because of the pandemic, um, our digital cookie orders have skyrocketed this year. So, um, you know, it was a great way for the girls to get their cookie sales in and um, it was great. Um, one thing I just wanna point out is if a girl, I'm gonna use an example. Our sale, our rewards are cumulative, okay? So what that means is if a girl sells 500 boxes of cookies, okay? She's gonna get what I call all the tchotchkes Okay, so she's going to get all the bowls and the blankets and the pillows, everything up to $3.99, okay? Then when she gets to that bottom portion for the all-star rewards, okay, she gets to shop. So she would get to choose one 500 prize, okay? If she sells, which I think our top seller last year sold almost 4,000 boxes or a little over 4,000. I just don't, I just don't remember off the holy, top of my head. Holy. <laughs> yeah, she she's a tap seller the last like five years, I think. And um, so she, what she does a lot of donating with her rewards. So she does a lot of she'll get like a couple American Girl dolls, but donate them to like Ronald McDonald House. So she does do a lot of donations there. Um, but if she sold, let's say your girl sells a thousand. She can either choose two 500 rewards or one 1000. So I call that the shopping area. OK, um, so just so that's that's sometimes a little confusing to people because we did change it years ago to say cumulative because it used to not be that way so we changed it and it was a little confusing at first but I think people get it now but it's always good to explain to your your our newcomers um choo -choo 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 -choo, cross and then, yeah one other thing like they'll get so like if they send 15 emails that's like in addition to the rest of the rewards so if they sell 25 boxes on digital cookie they're going to get that plus the other rewards um 
So they're, they're just kind of like bonus ones. If they can sell the cookies, however they want, if they want to mm-hmm. just don't, if they want to just donate cookies to people, like if people just want to buy donated cookies, they would get those operation cookie rewards plus however many um, for their, their grand total. I, I, I explain it as it's double dipping. We yes. do a lot of double dipping. So especially initial sale, like if a girl sells 225 packages on initial sale, she's getting all those initial sale rewards. Plus they count, all the way up to the the plush mm-hmm. so it's you're getting double the amount of prizes so they count for both so okay um i wanted to say scene but i'm not going to say scene slide <laughs> scene okay so digital cook we talked about it a little bit um what happens is is once your girls are registered they should get a link or an email from the system <clears throat> their parent oh, excuse me <clears throat> as long as we have their parents information their parents should get a link from Digital Cookie. It's unique to each girl, okay? So you can't share it. Um, and what happens is, is they then just go in and go through these four steps and they set up their, their child's site. It's fairly easy. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory as you go. Um, if anybody's done it, I mean, I'm not lying. You know, and if you have more than one child, like I have three daughters, I have one login for all three of them. I can just switch between my three daughters and see their different sites. For families that have multiple girls, you can use all of the same emails, okay? Because that's another problem with multiples is um, like, it's kind of hard. Like, I, I don't really think I have 45 emails of people. I mean, it got, I got to the point where I was sending everybody in the office an email, you know, <laughs> and they buy cookies anyway, because they're there you know, but I wanted them to get the patch, you know, but it's hard to come up with 45 people that, you know, you know, personally with an email. So you can double dip on those two. The girls will still get credit, um, but the person probably will get multiple emails. So you might just want to warn them, you know, they're going to look like they're being attacked by digital cookie emails. um, But just tell them once they purchase, that should go away. So hopefully, um, hopefully they purchase and then they don't get any more spammed digital cookie emails. And then I added the link to the login. So once you guys like have, like you've accepted it and done all that, you'll, you just have to click this and you'll, for later on, for later purposes. And if anybody has trouble with it, just shoot us an email um, and, you know, we'll make sure everybody's gotten, I resend the welcome email every couple of days. So that way it's fresh in their inbox. So if you have anybody that says they're not getting it, just let us know, you know, we're more than happy to. Who would they email if they didn't get it? Because I do have one that did not receive it in my troop. Okay, just email me at kdreschler. You probably have gotten my email about 90 times. Um, It's k-d-r-e-c-h-s-l-e-r at gssc.us. And it it might be in her spam too. I'm actually the leader, so she actually tested it on me and I didn't get mine, but a bunch of half of them did. Yeah, just let me know and we'll, we'll send them again. But yeah, they also tell your parents, thank you, Jenna. They do tend to go to spam and junk. Mine go to spam and junk and I work there. So okay. um, it's always a good place to start is those junk folders. So also, like I stated before, new this year is we're doing our catch-up orders, not via form, but via appointment through eBuddy. So this would be the screen you would go to. You would go to your transactions screen in eBuddy, there's a transactions tab at the top, and this is the screen you would get, okay? So what you would do is you would click on whatever cupboard you wanna go to, right next to the little cupboard, there's a drop down menu where you would choose what cupboard you wanna go to. You would pick a pickup date and time. It's only gonna allow you to pick a time and date that the cupboard is open. So if you pick a date that the cupboard is not operating at that moment, it's gonna boot you out and tell you to choose something else, okay? Then what you do is you're gonna fill in how many cases of each flavor or packages you want. um, And then you're gonna hit okay. And then at the top of the screen, you're gonna hit save, okay? It's gonna say pending, okay? So your order is gonna be in pending mode until you pick it up. Once you pick it up from the cupboard, the ladies in the cupboard will hit the release button because you've picked it up, we're releasing the cookies to you. And then you just have to go back and eBuddy. And on the bottom of this screen, you can see a little confirm button. You're going to confirm that you picked it up and then your ketchup's all done. Uh, you don't have to wait for us to data enter it. It's already in there. 
it takes a couple steps and it makes it a little bit faster than years past. So that's basically how you do a catch up. If anybody has questions on that, I can go live later and um, show you how to do it. Um, but it is fairly easy. And we have, um, we have a lot of instructions we can give you too. They're on our website. They're in the um, presentation too. Oh, good. There, there we go. Yeah. So um, yeah, you, there's lots of instructions on how to do each piece of the program. So that way you don't have to go back from square one. You can just look up what you need. Okay. Okay. So like I said before, deposit slips. So there's two options on how to pay. You can use a deposit slip that you should have gotten from your service unit cookie chair. Um, if you need more, you just let us know. You shoot us an email and we will mail you more. Um, I tell people to try to keep their payments separate, okay? It just makes backtracking, if there's ever a problem, a little bit easier, okay? So if you have a ketchup order that someone picked up, use a deposit slip for that. If you have initial sale money, use a deposit slip for that. If you have to use one deposit slip for everything, you can write on the bottom of the deposit slip, like next to the, the, um, the anchor mark, the micer, you know, reading what you did. That way it just, it just gives you another place to look in case there's a problem, okay? Right where that little arrow was pointing should be your troop number. So this is for my, my twins troop, it's 2767. So that's what is printed there. If you're a true 4,000, that would say 004,000. So before you go ahead and use deposit slips, make sure that the number is correct. Because what happens is the bank is gonna swipe it and that's who's gonna get credit for that deposit. So if you're using a deposit slip with the wrong troop number, another troop is gonna get credit. Don't panic, it's fixable. It's just another step. you know. So this is, by teaching you the right way is just el eliminating any problems you should have. Underneath the blue arrow, it should say there's two different types of, of um, deposit slips. There's a full deposit slip, which this one actually is. I think that's why I put the blue arrow on it. Um, <laughs> I think I was desperate at the moment. Um, or it should say cookies. So you want to make sure you're using one for cookies because the, the, um, the account numbers are different. So that's just another step. You're not going to see your deposit show up right away. You're gonna to have to contact us if you don't see it. It's just another thing, just double check. You can keep deposit slips from year to year. They don't expire. But like I said, just make sure you're using full for full, cookie for cookie, okay? The other thing you can do is we have a feature where you could pay with a credit card or a debit card online. The link is embedded here. It's available on our website. Um, and the link is right behind under there. It says product sales payment form. Parent, you can you can tell parents to pay their bills here. Um, you can pay your troop bill here. We do ask that parents use it when doing standabouts because we thought parents have no idea how to use a deposit slip and our you know not that they don't know how to use a deposit slip period, but they don't know how our banking works. So we thought it would just be a little too confusing for them. Um, we do bank at Capital One, so anytime you use one of these deposit slips you can go to any Capital One and they should be able to help you, okay? There are instances where they may ask you for your social security number. Um, it's, a, it's against their war on terror. So um, if you are depositing cash, it might get to the point where they, they ask you for your social security number. If you're depositing checks, they will not. So, I mean, if that's a concern of yours, use the deposit slip to put checks in the bank. Use the pay troop bill to pay for everything cash. You know, there's always a workaround. Okay, so that's pretty much how payments work. Sorry. Okay, standabouts. So usually we do boot sales, which I think everybody pretty much knows what they are. You see the kids standing outside Walmart and, you know, the food stores. Well, due to the pandemic, um, that had to be eliminated so far this year. We're hoping that we're able to do them at some point, but you know, we have to take each each week by week. So we came up with this idea to do what's called a standabout because we do have something called a walkabout where you can walk around your neighborhood. We're not there yet, but we're still promoting standabouts. Basically a standabout is a family picks up their own mini boot sale, has nothing to do with the troop at all. So the only thing we're asking you to do is share this information with your parents, okay? So they would request the pickup at, at the link 
on our website. It's also on the bottom of the screen. Anybody in the troop can do it. They don't need to be, the parent does not need to be registered. The girl obviously does. So they would pick up their standabout. We would give them a standard standard out. Um, it's 15 cases of cookies. So we know what to give. Um, they go and they do their standabout. It's basically a lemonade stand on their front lawn. Then we let them hold the cookies for two weeks. Usually a booth sale, we only allow a week, but because it was a family run stands about, I figured two weeks is a little bit better. It gives people two weekends to kind of do a sale. Then once they're done in those two weeks, they just need to um, return their stand about by filling out the form. They let us know what they sold, you know, what they're bringing back to us. And then they pay for whatever they sold on the pay troop bill. So the troop has nothing at all to do with this. What's going to happen is once they're returned, council's going to add them into the system, into eBuddy, and then we're going to assign them to the girl who did the standabout. So it truly is hands off for the troop. Um, so it, it's really, you know, I have a lot of people that are trying to, you know, well, if I have three girls and three girls show up, no, it's not a booth sale. We're not allowing booth sales right now. This is strictly a family run in their front yard on their own property boot sale. Okay. It's a little lemonade stand. Okay. Um, there are some patches that we're offering the girls. They will receive the boot sale patch if they do this, because we have this in our plan anyway. So we thought, why not give the girls who are participating that? And then we came up with the really cute Girl Scout standabout cookie booth patch. That's really adorable. Um, this upcoming weekend, we're having, uh, uh, Jenna, what did we call it? Uh, think outside the cookie box. Thank you. Thank Think outside the cookie box patch weekend. So troops can do virtual booth sales, you know, where they can promote their cookie sales online. Um, or a family can do a standabout and the girl can earn that patch too. We're very patch crazy and we love giving patches out. And we love coming up with fun ones. So um, that's pretty much how a standabout works. Um, so like I said, truly troop hands off. Nothing for them to worry about. Um, everything goes through the family. So it's a really great thing. Absolutely. When do the standabouts end? When can they do that till? They could do them all the way till the end of the sale. Right now our sale ends May 4th. May 4th. Okay, thank you. And okay. The links to, to request them and to return are all will be embedded into the thing. And to pay your trip bill. Well, that was already there. We just put it in multiple places. Yeah, it's just, it's good to have when, like when you need it. We talked a little bit about Operation Cookie, so I won't beat this one down right now. Um, last, on a normal year, we donate about 45,000 boxes of cookies. Um, but because last year was COVID and, you know, or the cookie sale halfway through kind of fell apart, um, we donated over 100,000 boxes, okay, to, because we, what were we going to do with them? It was either throw them out or donate them. So we donated them because why not? So we donated a lot to hospitals. We went all over. We didn't even just stay in Suffolk last year. We did Greater New York. We did hospitals and police departments at FDNY. Whoever wanted cookies, we got them cookies. So it was a great, great thing we did last year. Um, and we're looking to do it again this year, just probably on a little bit of a smaller scale. Um, so, um, but it really was a great thing. Um, and, you know, hopefully we can continue this from here on in. So can I get slide? Thank you. Okay, rebates. Let's talk rebates. So when the girls sell cookies, they get rebates for the troop. So that's that helps your troop funds go up so you don't have to ask the parents for so much money. So we do the same thing in full. Um, what happens is every box of cookies the girl sells, the troop gets 70 cents, okay? If your per girl average per box sold is between 200 and 299 or 300 or more, you'll earn more per box. If your troop is cadets or older, you can opt out of rewards and not get any of those tchotchke rewards with the horse and the blanket and the pillows. And you could get an extra nickel per box. So straight off the bat, you would get 75 cents. Um, and then have the option to earn the extra for the per, per girl average. eBuddy figures out all the figures. So we don't have to worry about keeping track of anything like that. It does it all for us. So it's a beautiful thing. Um, we do issue the rebates at the end of the sale. So you would probably start seeing your rebate mid-May um, as long as your troop is paid in full. 
So that is a stipulation is we can't issue a rebate when a troop owes money because it kind of negates the purpose, okay? So um, if you have an issue where, like I was talking earlier, how a parent didn't pay you, um, we have a form that's called an outstanding form. We just need you to fill that out. You attach a copy of their permission slip. You let us know how you tried to contact them. You know, I texted them on this day. I emailed them on this day. Anything you can add to it. We then take that over as a burden to us, and we try to contact the parent. Um, if we can't get through to the parent, we send them to collections, okay? Uh, it, it doesn't happen often, but it happens. So it's also good to know we don't give forms out, you know, regularly. If you need them, you just let us know and we get you the form when you need it. But hopefully you never will. So um, that is pretty much how rebates work. We talked a little about rewards already. Um, you know, about them being cumulative. It's kind of very repetitive. I should just eliminate this slide. After a while, you know, you start talking. Okay, avatar patch, we'll talk about it a little bit. What's gonna happen is most of your girls probably are not gonna have the opportunity to earn this patch right now. Um, it's called a cookie crossover patch because our, our, our plan is to have your girls participate in full and cookies, okay? So what happens is, is we ask them to participate in full and send out 15 emails. And if they sell $350 worth of full product, which is nuts, magazines, it could be during booth sales, it could be during standabouts, it could be anything, they would earn the, the full avatar patch. So this year was the little girl in the kayak, okay? Then is if the girls did all that, but didn't, let's say the girl didn't sell the 350, but she sent out 15 emails in the fall, and then sells 150 boxes of cookies, she would get the other avatar patch with little girls holding up the world. Those patches change every year. They go with the theme. This theme, this year's theme for fall was the sloth. Um, and the world I think is just a perfect symbol for this year. Um, I don't recall, I don't think they showed us what next year's is yet. So I don't know what next year's is yet. Um, and I'm not sure of their theme yet either, um, but Every year these change, but it's just good to know for next year, you know, so you can push the girls to participate, at least sending out their 15 emails in the fall. Okay. Has gardening? I'm not sure. I, I don't remember. It's the penguin. I, I, well, you'll, I you'll hear penguin. all about it. It'll just be more reason to tune in in the fall so we can show you. Yeah, I think it's a penguin, but I'm not sure what the cookie one looks like. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. So this is a great slide here. Um, this Jenna created this. So that way it has all the videos and anything that has to do, like every time we, what happens is, is when someone asks us the same question 55 times in a week, we're like, we need to make a video for that. And that way it explains it to people. Cause sometimes it, it, as long if you guys are new, so you know, Girl Scouts is like a different language. We talk and sometimes we think people are understanding us, but they really don't, you know, with cupboards and cookies and, rebates and you know we talk and we expect everybody to know what we're talking about um in a year or two you will understand everything and that's fantastic but it's not instantaneous so these videos are here whenever we get so many questions on something we're like a video needs to happen for this so that way it just helps everybody along the way understand a little bit more about the sale about the program about standabouts about how sharing on social media that's always the hot topic um jenna did you want to show all some anything well i mean the cupboard procedures do you guys kind of understand that part or do you want us to do like let us kind of know um the social media one might be good to share the social media one's probably the biggest one so maybe let's start with that one because we didn't really touch it in the training so that might be a good one to Cookie season is here. And I don't see it, but it might just be me. Oh, you don't see it? Okay, hold on. Customers. Last time I said that and nobody else did, so I want to make sure I tell you. Uh, it's just because it's in a pop up. to sell. So I'll just share my screen with that. I was just sharing that screen. So I will share the new screen with the video. Okay, you see it? Yes. Okay. 
cookie season is here. And more and more Girl Scouts are using the digital cookie platform to reach new customers. And it's no wonder. With digital cookie, you get more ways to participate, more ways to sell, more ways to learn, while customers get more ways to buy. With digital cookie, you can create your own personalized cookie site that you can share with friends or family or even on social media. But it's important to remember that girls of all ages should partner with a parent or guardian to make a plan to safely market their business online. And that plan should include reviewing the Internet Safety Pledge, digital marketing tips for cookie entrepreneurs and families, and the supplemental safety tips for online marketing. You can find these resources at girlscouts.org under Troop Leader Resources or on our own website, gssc.us, under Digital Cookie. You should also review the Girl Scout Digital Cookie Pledge. We'll take a look at some of the highlights as we go through the do's and don'ts of cookie marketing. First up, the do's. After consulting with a parent or guardian, girls 13 or older can post their link to a personal social media account like Facebook or Instagram. If you're under 13, your parent or guardian will manage your cookie site and can post your link for you. You can now also post to a public facing site, but be aware that your link is now searchable by anyone and could potentially appear anywhere on the internet. Or you can use your link in a marketing email to send to friends, family, or businesses that you know. And now the don'ts. You should never share your personal contact information, including your last name or address or school. Stick to your first name only and your troop number. Never share your location information or where you're going to be. Don't direct message people that you don't know on social media. And you can post to social media sites, but avoid e-commerce sites like eBay or Facebook Marketplace. And you should never pay for social media ads to promote your digital cookie link. Okay, so you've heard the rules. What else can you do with your digital cookie link? Let's find out. It's here with the digital cookie app you can generate a QR code, which links directly to your personalized site. Print out your QR code for door hangers, business cards, signs. You can even label your cookie boxes with your code so customers can order more before the season ends. You can also use your digital cookie link to host a virtual cookie booth. Want to learn more? Check out this step-by-step -step guide available at gssc.us under digital cookie. Knowing what to post, check out littlebroudybakers.com for tons of ready to use social media shareables. Posting is stand about. Use the digital cookie app to scan credit cards instead of handling cash. The digital cookie app can also help you earn your cookie badges and pins. Girl Scouts are just getting started with all the innovative ways to use digital cookie. So this year, think about how you can use digital cookie to expand your network grow your people skills, and meet your goals while safely marketing online. Okay. Thank you, Jenna. So basically, um, we've like broke it down into like some videos that you can watch. We also did some videos um, that you could sh share to your troop. So like there's links for you and then it's broken down to links you could show them like little brownie always makes videos on the different cookie types. Um, there's also links to the cookie finder um, to the cookie what's it called the mascot cookie friend. Oh yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> where um <laughs> they <laughs> where they can meet the mascot learn about um hope the horse. Um, there's links to games and things like that that are going to be um, that are. Girl Scouts has two bakeries. Just so yeah. you guys know, if you don't know that, there's an ABC Bakery that deals with about half the councils, and then there's Little Brownie Baker. Um, our bakery is Little Brownie Baker. They do make different cookies, so you might. There was a new cookie this year, the Toast Yays, which, whatever. Whatever. We're cookie snobs. Okay. We're getting Whatever. a cookie next year, probably. We're getting a new one next year, but Toast Jays, I think, is the stupidest name ever, but that's just the name. The name that. Um, whatever. But um, Little Brownie Baker really does have a fantastic website. 
So, I mean, if you want to do a troop meeting on cookies, you go there. It has it mapped out already for you. Like they have people that it's just their job just to do this. So, I mean, it's fantastic. And I always try to tell people to go there. And I don't think many people do, but you really should. Because it really, like Jenna said, they have great backgrounds. Um, they, they just have everything mapped out for you. You can make a cookie plan guide on how you want to do your cookies that year. I mean, it's just a fantastic, fantastic site. Um, so that's one of my favorites. But um, like I said, ABC Bakery, they do have cookies that are similar to ours. Like we have a, they, the only cookie that has the same name is Thin Mints because GSUSA owns the copyright to that name. Um, but they have Samoas, but they're called Caramel Delights. They have Tagalongs, but they're Peanut Butter Patties. So then we do have some similar ones, but then they have, they branch out. Like we have, we both have s'more cookies, but ours don't look anything like each other. Theirs looks like a chocolate covered graham cracker and ours actually looks like a s'more, you know? So it's a little different, but um, just so if anybody ever asked you, especially about the toast yays this year, we get a lot of those. Can you get them? No, I can't get them. They're not part of our bakery. So I can't order from a different bakery. We have contracts with them, so we can't do that. Okay. Um. I think also in here is the the troop. Um, so when you have the digital cookie um, site, when you set it up, you could also set up a troop link for your for your troop. Um, so like if you've seen like they you, you can use the digital cookie finder. People can put in their zip code and find the troops that are selling in that area. The um, cookie finder is usually used for booth sales. Mm -hmm. What happens is, is someone's looking to buy cookies, so they put their zip code in, and it tells them that there's going to be a boot sale at Walmart between four and six on Saturday, and then they go up there and buy cookies. But because we don't have any boot sales happening right now, we're not going to put girls' random addresses in there for standabouts because that's just not safe. Um, so GSUSA came up with this idea where the troops can create their own links and share those. So if someone wants to buy cookies, they will have to pay for shipping. But at least it's another opportunity if the person is really having, you know, a hankering for a thin mint, um, they can get them that way. So it's a, it was a nice alternative this year. I think they preemptively striked on that one, which is, you know, nice to see. So that was nice of them to do that this year. Can I ask a question about that? Mm -hmm. So my troop, we actually set one of those sites up and we sold five random boxes of cookies through that troop site. Mm -hmm. Did those cookies get... Do the, like how did do those get allocated to they can okay what, what we're gonna do is because it's gonna uh, it's a task in itself so what we're gonna do is probably I want to say end of April um, my assistant and myself are gonna go into all the troops that have cookies just like that and we're gonna make them available for you to allocate to the girls. But the, we can't do it every day. We just don't have the manpower or the time. So we're going to wait till the end of the sale, like right before it's over, make them available for you so that way you could share them amongst all the girls. Under anybody. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we'll send you directions once we, you know, come up with the date that we're going to have them available. And we'll send you exactly what to do and how to do it. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. The, the slide will also have the allocation di directions that are they're in the site too. Um, there's a PDF in there that'll take you step by step on what to do. Um, and then for, for if you're taking a, there's a question in the chat, if you're taking a credit card payment um, at a standabout, you can use the digital cookie link. So if you open up your digital cookie page, um, there's a, a scanner built into it and then you would just hold it over the credit card so it could read the numbers? Yeah, when you open the link, it has an option. The first screen has the option of take a new order. So that's basically what you're doing is you're taking a new order. So you would click on that and then you could either manually fill in all the information. Um, I haven't played with it myself, but, um, but there's a way for you to scan the card also, like take a picture of it, I guess. And that way it goes into the system. Um, but it's fantastic because you don't, it goes straight, that payment then goes straight into eBuddy. So it's not like using like Venmo or something like that, where if you take Venmo, then first of all, you're going to be charged a fee because, you know, they charge, it's, it's very minuscule, but it's still a fee. And then you have to write a check or take the cash out and deposit it. So it goes into eBuddy. This is the fastest way to do it, where someone can just take the order take the credit card and it goes right into eBuddy. It's really quite nice. 
yeah like that and so there should be it, if you if you go on there you should be able to see it like it'll just it just looks like i think it opens up when you have to do the like it just like you were reading a qr code like you would go it would you you might have to give it access mm -hmm. to your camera in the app um but you should just look at it the same way and then um somebody asked a question about the um if if you're if you have someone that's in an apartment building um, yeah, I kind of uh, answered that one. I kind of answered that one. But my suggestion was is to do it on the sidewalk, you know, yeah. in front of your in front of your apartment. But just make sure that you're asking the apartment complex if it's okay, because the last thing you want is a little girl to feel upset that she can't do it after being told to go away. You know, that's yeah, the last thing you want. Like her apartment's actually on like a. It's like you know where like Port Jeff is. It's on like a strip mall kind of thing. So she's gonna be like on a street. So mm -hmm. I was like, no, 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 I don't know if you should really be doing that. So she's going to see if she could do it in the lobby. Okay. And she can yeah. also use the door hangers. So like the door hangers are on our site. Okay. Um, under the cupboard. So she could cut, like print out the door hangers and either put her digital cookie QR code on there. Or she could say like, there's ones for the standabout. She can say, I'll be outside. Okay. That's a good idea. On Saturday. And she can share them with the people she knows in the apartment complex and let them know. She can even like, if she knows them, she could have them write down their orders. Um, some people create like a, a separate email and have those orders, like have them email their orders there that way. Okay. Um, and yeah, then I have that and I have two that are on like dirt road dead end. So I told you yeah. just to walk down the dead end because they're like. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, th this is this was a this was a quick fix that we had to try to come up with to accommodate at least some girls. Yeah. Unfortunately, it, it it's not going to accommodate every single girl. Um, but we were trying to come up with something so the girls could still participate and feel normal. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we took this pandemic has taken so much of that normal feeling away. Um, and I, I, you can ask my three daughters, their memories of Girl Scouts are doing boot sales. You know, like remember when daddy dressed up as a cookie and he was at the boot sale and my husband's a goofball, he dresses up as a cookie, but those are the memories they have. And so I felt like this year we were taking that, that aspect away, but you know, we, we had no choice. We had, we, it was taken away from us to make the choice, but at least this was a form of feeling somewhat normal, you know, of giving them that feeling of some sort of a boot sale. A few know? of the girls have done it. They, they definitely are having a good time so far doing it. I'm glad to hear it. We hear that they're going fantastic. We have a lot of girls selling out. Um, we have a lot of them out, you know, a lot of people really adopted to this. I think it's something we won't even take away. I think in the following years, we'll, we'll, we'll keep this now, you know, so that way, you know, for years and years, I mean, like I said, I've been here quite a while. It's always been a struggle to get family involvement. You know, like if you don't, if you don't get them involved from that first meeting where you assign jobs, you kind of lose them. So three or four years down the line, when you feel burned out and you can't do it anymore, you've lost those parents. You're not going to get them back. I feel like this was a way this year, we got some of them back. You know, some of them are actually taking the time to do these things with their kids, where it used to just feel like a babysitting service to some degree. You know, I mean, you guys get to that point where you feel like they're just dropping their kid off and picking them up, you know, and this felt more like they're, they're getting more involved with their, their Girl Scout career, you know? So it, it was like a double bonus, you know? The girls are getting what they need. And now the parents are actually getting more involved too. Mm -hmm. So I, I personally felt like it was a double win. So if anything good came out of it, at least that did. Uh, so I put the, the, the PDF to, with the slideshow <laughs> in the chat, if you guys can want to download it. Um, well, I'm also going to give it um, directly to Nicole. So she'll have it and she can put it on the uh, VTK. Um, but if you guys want to do that, um, like I know, does anybody else have any questions? Oh yeah, I had a question about this cookie order. <laughs> that was me. Uh -huh. um, so like, I don't know if you want to can hang on and chat with me for a second because I don't know if there was a, um, uh, like I got the wrong order or something. Like, I'm not sure what happened. Um, Kate, what service unit are you a part of? Um, I don't know the service unit number, but what I know it's group number. From? What town? Uh, Dix Hills. Okay, Dix Hills, probably it's either five or 12. <clears throat> okay, what, um, yeah, what I can sure. do is I can look it up in eBuddy, but I, I'm going to need you to scan me like your the ticket they gave you at pickup. Um, 
Like, did you pick up your cookies from the service unit or did you come to the cupboard? No, I, well, I got it off the truck. They didn't give me anything except for the cookies. I don't have any paperwork. Okay. So, so I, what I need you to do is I need you to email me your troop number. So that way I can ask the service unit cookie chair. She keeps a ticket with what you picked up. So that way I can see what you picked up and then I can do a little digging and see if it's correct or not. Um, yeah, my girls. But you know, I, I, I can't double, I can't say definite until I see the ticket. Okay, yeah, my girls placed the order. They used the, the digital cookie platform and then I picked up off the truck. So, I so you probably I did get extra. The most extra anybody would get, um, there are two options when you place your initial order. We ask you that you, if you don't do digital, just digital, and girls do have order cards, you do have the option of rounding down. Um, what eBuddy does is no matter what, if you need nine Thin Mints to fill your initial sales, it's gonna round you up to 12 because everything in Girl Scout Land is 12 to a case, okay? So you're gonna end up with three extra Thin Mints, okay? Um, what happened this year is a lot of troops did that where we're just doing digital but didn't take into account that they're gonna get extra cookies because it's gonna round up. Um, the most of a flavor you should get is 11 because then you needed it. You know, Then you needed it for another full case. Um, we do accept you to come down. We, can, we do let you come down to the cupboard and switch out flavors. So we have troops that end up with an 11 extra toffee, the poor toffee, they have a spot in my heart. Um, but if you need thin mints, then you could bring those 11 toffee down and we'll switch them out for Thin Mints for you. Um, so there is no way for us to return them from an initial sale, um, but we can let you swap them out for different flavors because they're all the same price. So it doesn't matter to me. It's just, you know, if you need tagalongs, then you come down and get some tagalongs and swap them out. Um, but Kate, I do have to do a little bit digging. Once I see that ticket, then I can confirm whether you've got the right amount or not. Okay, and if I did get the right order and everything just kind of rounded up, like I say, I needed like two boxes of whatever Samoas, and then gave me a whole case. Um, mm -hmm. I can't return those. Yes. I have to. I have to. I got to get some buyers. As of right now, we're not taking them back. Um, but my suggestion is to have a standabout and use those and sell them. Okay. You know, um, just don't pick up a standabout. Just use those cookies. You right, know, and that way right, you can get right. rid of them. And then, um, cause I got the wrong deposit slips. I could either go and get the new deposit slips or if I, I can use the digital cookie thing and they yes, can- Yes, you can. That. Okay. You All can right. use digital cookie. You can pay, use the pay online, but also when you email me, I'll throw you some deposit slips in the mail just in case. Cause if okay. anybody pays you with a check, my, no, my concern was, is- No, it was all done um, digitally. So okay, then you should I didn't have, have to deal with any anything. money. Yeah. yeah, so it's a good thing, but unfortunately, there's downfalls to it, too. But that's another little tidbit. If someone's paying you with a check, never put strangers' checks into your troop account. Um, because if they bounce, the troop is going to have to eat the fees on that. Okay? I suggest making that extra step and doing the deposit slip with people's checks and bringing that to Capital One. Because if they bounce on our end, we have a company that deals with it. And, you know, we don't even have to deal with it. It, you're, you would still get credit for your deposit because it's not your fault the check bounced and it's just a little bit more smoother for you. So my suggestion is either tell them not to give you checks or just don't put them in your troop account. I hate to see anybody's troop account be feed because we don't reimburse for um, bounce checks, okay? That's another reason for them to use the digital cookie um, for the credit card payments because we pay those. So your troop wouldn't have to pay those credit card fees. Yeah, the there actually is a fee involved, but the council absorbs it. So right. that way, like they're like Venmo, there's a fee, but the council absorbs the one for digital cookie. Right. Okay. So I have a question about eBuddy. If there's if we don't have a checking account yet for a troop, and um, where the where does the rebates go? I guess by then we'll hopefully have our account. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about it yet because I'm not going to do rebates until like mid May. Okay. So as long as you get that done and what you do is there's a, if, if you can't find the link on the website, just shoot an email and we'll send you the link. We're accepting ACH forms via um, Wufu form, which is a link on our website. So you don't have to mail us anything. You just have to fill it out, take a picture and, you know, we accept it that way. So it's a little bit easier for you. We're just having a problem getting one. So, okay. Thank you. 
Yeah, so, but uh, don't worry. We don't do them until mid-May anyway. If you're still having trouble then, I can always send it to the service unit account. Okay. And then they can hold it for you until you get your Perfect. banking set up. Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. And I put the link in the chat too, if anybody else needs it. Oh, thank you, thank you. I just, I don't know if we took it down because it was part of full, so I'm, I'm not sure if it's still on there. I put, I just put it in the search. <laughs> yeah. I know, sometimes I, I know. even though I'm the one that tells them where to put stuff sometimes I still don't know yeah if, if that's another tidbit on our GSSC website if you can't find something like the pay true bill or something if you just search it it pops right up mm -hmm. so don't go crazy trying to find something just pop like tonight's I couldn't remember the date the time for tonight's meeting I just put it in cookies 101 there it was seven o'clock you know because I'm like what did, I woke up this morning I'm like what time is that meeting tonight is it six or seven and, you know I didn't want to be late. So. so if there are no more questions, thank you so much for coming out tonight. Um, we are here to help you. So use us and abuse us. Um, please just make sure that we're, we're a little shorthanded in the Colmac office. So we've been spending half of our day most of the time out in the cupboard trying to pull orders because we're a little shorthanded there. Um, so just be patient with us on responses. We try to get back to everybody in the order that they were received. Um, but we will get back to you, I promise. Um, and um, any questions, just let us know. All right, thank you guys. Hey. All right, great, thank you so much. Thank no you. No problem. Mm -hmm.